Greetings loyal subscribers and honoured guests. It's been a while since I uploaded the first episode, but it's time to continue my Budget Bangers series. The goal for each of these is to find a game that costs £15 or less, that still plays incredibly well today, going back as far as the PS4 and Xbox One era, but no further back than that. This time I am looking at Drive Club, a big budget failure for Sony, that is long overdue a reassessment. Drive Club was announced during one of Sony's press conferences by a representative from the developer, Evolution Studios, who was extremely excited about the project and car culture in general. What they were offering was a realistic driving game, which obviously has been done many times before, but the hook with this one were the extensive social options, including the ability to create your own clubs to drive with your friends, set challenges for people on your friend list, and forge rivalries with them. This was backed up by breathtaking visuals, robust and realistic physics and handling for the cars, and fully modelled interiors for every licensed vehicle in the game. I was very excited by everything they showed off at that event, and I was left really looking forward to the release of the game. What's more, Sony mentioned Drive Club PS Plus Edition, where paying subscribers to their monthly service would receive a version of the game at no extra cost. Fantastic! The game was originally set to release in 2013, but was pushed back into 2014 with an eventual release date of the 7th of October, a full year after the game was initially expected. However, the launch did not go smoothly. The game was beset by server issues, and promised features such as dynamic weather were cut and released as patches later on. The PS Plus edition was also delayed until they figured things out, until eventually it was decided to postpone it indefinitely. The subscriber edition eventually materialised in June 2015 and was ultimately quite disappointing as it contained just a small fraction of the locations and events found in the full retail release. It was pulled by Sony as soon as October 2015. By this point I had already bought the game on disc and I tried to get into it for a while, even picking up the paid season pass DLC during a sale, but I still didn't really enjoy the game. I eventually got rid of my copy and I haven't really thought about the game until this year. All this time I assumed that due to the online connectivity in the game that it was totally unplayable now. And while it is true that a big chunk of Drive Club is now off limits because of this, there is still a sizeable single player campaign to play through and enjoy. I don't really know what inspired me to give the game a second chance. I think a few other YouTubers mentioned it and then I looked into how well it played today and how much a copy would cost me. CEX is selling the game for £4, which is already a steal, but I have no doubt that you could find a copy in a charity shop for just a quid or two if you were lucky. But why is the game worth a second chance all this time later? Well, I definitely didn't give Drive Club enough of a chance the first time around. I put a few hours into it, got a bit frustrated with the difficulty level and the twitchiness of the cars, put it down, tried again later with similar results, and then ultimately quit. This time around, the media aren't constantly talking about how the game sucks or the technical issues with it. No one cares. So I can just play at my own pace, risk-free, and take the time to get used to the way the cars handle. Once you do get a feel for the hypercar class and can take one round the track for an entire race without spinning out, it becomes incredibly rewarding. That's not to say you should just jump into the higher car classes from the start, either. If you play the main campaign from the beginning, then you will start off with the hot hatch class, which is a lot easier to manage, and then gradually work your way through all of the events. There's about two hours of content for each class of car, I would estimate, so roughly ten hours in total to play through the whole lot. I don't remember there being an easy difficulty in the original release of the game, so it may well have been there all along, but it is a welcome inclusion nonetheless. If the standard difficulty is proving too much for you, you can switch at any time and earn silver stars instead of gold ones. Instead of having to place third or better in a race to earn a star, you will now only have to come in fifth, for example. So you can take your time and play through on easy to get used to the game, then go back and earn the gold stars later when you're better at it, which I really appreciate. There is one aspect of Drive Club that has stuck with me over the years, and that's the visuals. The level of detail in the environments and the cars is extremely impressive, especially considering just how long ago the game came out for the PS4. It still holds up remarkably well today against most PS5 titles. Speaking of which, I am playing the game on my PS5 and there are no compatibility problems whatsoever, which is quite impressive considering that support for the game ended well before the PS5 came into existence. In fact, I suspect the game has benefited from a subtle performance bump due to the extra power under the hood, but Digital Foundry I am not, so I am going to have to leave the technical analysis to the likes of them I'm afraid. 
The range of locales that Evolution have recreated include the countryside of India, the hills and mountains of Scotland, and my particular favourite, snowy Norwegian docks where the northern lights are visible at night time. In terms of the sound, the game does give as much attention to detail to the engines of each individual model of car, but with me far from being an expert on these things, it's a little lost on me. However, hidden away within the menus is the option to turn up the in-game music, which reveals a full dynamic soundtrack by dance music duo Hybrid. This is really pulse-pounding cinematic stuff, which does change to suit what's happening within a race. My only criticism is that there's not really enough of it, so you'll be hearing the same few tunes repeat over and over again. Quality racing games and talented studios to build them have dried up in recent times. We are really just left with Playground Games, Bugbear, Codemasters under EA, and Polyphony Digital to carry the torch for racing fans. By the time of Drive Club's demise we had already lost the likes of Bizarre Creations and Black Box Studio, and now Evolution Studios who gave us the amazing Motorstorm series was to be no more as well. It's too late to do anything to help the studio unfortunately, but I can at least give the game another chance and I recommend that you do too. For less than the cost of a McMuffin meal at Mackie D's, you can pick up Drive Club and have a lot of fun with it. Even missing the social hooks that were the main selling point originally, you're left with a solid single player experience that is worth your time. Drive Club deserves a score of 8 out of 10 based on the amount of fun you can still have with it and the low price. So next time you see a copy out in the wild, don't just dismiss it as another of gaming's failures. Consider giving it a chance. Thank you for watching this episode of Budget Bangers. I should have another one for you sooner rather than later, I hope. If you enjoyed it, then please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel and sharing on social media. See you on the next one, and in the meantime, take care.